I will catch people up in case anyone stumbles on this YouTube video, but it sounds like a lot of you know exactly what I'm going to be talking about right now. So, uh, fun. Join me for the journey. I, you know what? These last few days in my extreme exhaustion and stupor, I, I was transfixed by the drama I'm about to describe to you. And when I say I was transfixed, like I couldn't, I couldn't look away. It, it was like part of my brain was like, I saw the tweets, the like the little uh, videos that got clipped of the debate, and one of them I'm not going to show because it has to deal with uh, child sexual uh, sexual trauma that uh, I'm going to try to avoid for the most part. Uh, so this should this should avoid all of that in case that is uh, an issue for some people who who don't want to hear that aspect of it, but. I, I saw the clips and I was like, I don't believe that anyone can actually hold this view. And so I therefore spent, uh, you know, time while uh, doing other things, watching this stuff and just blowing my mind <laughs> that this actually occurred. So the, the conversation that is, I guess, the central focus of what uh, drama I'm speaking of occurred between two people. One of them is named uh, Riley Grace Rochon, who uh, just will easily be referred to as RGR. That's what she goes by anyways. And I will describe her in a second, but she's, she's a political debate streamer. As you can tell in this clip here, which we'll play in a second, uh, that's her down here. They're in like, the you know, she, she does all the debate panels. Apparently she's been friends with Destiny, uh, who's another debate streamer. All this fun stuff. I'll, I'll go over... <laughs> Oh. I will go over some of that Boo in a second. debate. Fuck debate. Yes, I should frame up front, too. We, we come out against debate generally on this channel, so uh, uh, good to just keep that up front. Anti-debate here, uh, boo debate. To be clear, to be clear, like, net, we're poor on debate bros and debate, debate culture. No. True. No, no, I, no, I think we, you no, could no, have... We have conversations, Vienna. I don't want to hear yeah, that. Yeah, that's we, conversations, I, I you... exactly. You <laughs> no, that's, already... Okay. Listen, we're having a we, debate we, now. We dis... <laughs> I'm just saying we discourse, right? Debate. That's all I'm saying is we discourse. Yes. Discourse I is fine. I will admit to that. I, I also think, like, debate within, like, academic culture serves a particular purpose. Uh, meaning, like, you have two experts at, like, a, a colloquial... A colloquium having a discussion about the the nuances of their views to clarify things that kind of stuff i totally get this this fucking twitch eight thousand panels of people just yelling at each other and saying stupid shit is not cool and i wish it would just go away forever uh, I, I i've joked on here I, I think i've said it live if not i've told a lot of people this uh it's not really that funny i consider it a joke but my idea is if i ever get asked to go on one of these panel discussions i want to sit there and when it comes to me and they're like what is your opinion about whether or not it's ethical to slaughter your enemies or something like this and i'll just be like i don't believe the debate is something that should happen on twitch and i will just go through i'll be debating something that they're not debating which is the nature of debate itself and why we should not be having it and that would just be my sole role on every debate panel i go on that would 100 <laughs> Like the boring fucking Twitch stream I've ever seen. Where's the yelling? Where's the drama? Where's the drama? I could would look dead into the camera, press the button on the bomb that he put under the other person's chair. <laughs> I'd just be like, I don't, I don't uh, know why I'm here. I, I, I hate debate, and I hate that I'm here. And then I'll, I'll just go on trashing debate while we're supposed to be talking about whether we should have continued our war in Iraq or something. Uh, yeah, I want none of that. Iraq, not Iraq, which is, I think, what I said. Okay. Wow. <laughs> he, he he corrected himself. Yeah, no, wow. I it's I, I as I've said before, uh, Iran and Iraq are the two that, like my brain immediately picks up on it because I know I've been fucking contaminated by the rebel and their improper saying of those words, and so it happens. So the other, so we got. RGR is the one party. The other party, uh, the party that we are largely going to agree with in this conflict, is someone uh, named Doe, and they go by it, its pronouns. 
that is going to be relevant to some of the discussion we're going to get into. I, I'm not used to using those pronouns, so I, I might fuck them up. I just want to flag that here, that it won't be intentional. I respect someone who wants to use it, its pronouns, and I will refer with it, its pronouns as much as I can. With, uh, I think part of it is because it's a, similar to they in that it's a word that you already use. It, my brain feels, gets conflicted in some situations where I go, I go to wanting to use they and them in the context where I should be using either it or its. So if that happens, I apologize. What are RGR's pronouns again? She, her. So we have she, her, it, it's. Wait, who, who is the person who uses it, it's pro Do. pronouns? Is that the person who is debating RGR? RGR? Yes. Yes, okay. Now, back in June, there was this debate that arose over whether or not kink should be allowed at Pride. I think I might have said something on stream back then. It was a while ago, so I might have forgotten that I am cool with kink being at Pride. I do not care that kink is at Pride. Kink should be at Pride. Uh, I, I think that a lot of people get confused, like, or, or they think that there's something essential about the clothes that people wear that, like, makes it essentially sexual and therefore the mere fact of somebody wearing a particular article of clothing at an event is sexual and therefore if children happen to go by someone who's dressed in leather or something that therefore there's there's an issue here because now children are being exposed to a sexual act which is somebody wearing chains and leather and i'm like no, <laughs> there's nothing essential about the clothing. And in particular, in the act of pride and go like wearing something like that during a march, which I would argue doesn't happen that often. I've been to a lot of prides, not just in uh, our city of London, Ontario, but in other cities. And, uh, you know, I've very, very rarely seen like extreme displays of kink, if that makes sense. Now, even if I did, I wouldn't care. I'm just saying that, like, it, it's all like the one of the other part that frustrates me about this stuff is that they reflect on this as if it's like a serious issue. It happens so often. We need to talk about it, and I often want to reflect like this. This is such a non-issue. It almost never happens. Why do we care about this? <laughs> but it's the actually a very old debate topic that's been going on for a good like five years or so on Tumblr that has. That only like in the recent couple of years has like spread over to other sites, it seems. And the thing is, I'm fairly sure that it originally started because of like 4chan raiders onto Tumblr. Like yep. it was manufactured screenshots and manufactured like articles and everything like that. That was just like it is purely like a homophobic and transphobic dog whistling. And uh, like to see people get kind of like caught up in it is just very fucking exhausting and also to just like see this continued for so fucking long when like it doesn't really happen on tumblr anymore because it's just like everybody who is left on that fucking website is just like we've been there we did that we're over it I... all of us lived through those years we don't need to repeat <laughs> them on twitter and then on tiktok and then on apparently twitch and youtube like, I am optimistic. It just fucking sucks. I'm optimistic. Given this exchange, this might have ended it for a bit. <laughs> I think, I think it's reached its logical apex, and we have nothing but like greener pastures ahead. Okay. <laughs> Give us six months. Give us six months. It'll be yes, back. Yes, We've seen if, this. If I have to eat my words I've lived later, this okay. Before. Sure. I, well, in the at least in the like, uh, let's say the the nearer future, I feel like this is it, it, you, six months, maybe two months. It probably still people would be quiet because of of what happened. It's kind of like the satanic panic cycle. I actually think that the the satanic panic stuff 
and uh, even QAnon stuff uh, definitely fits into this thing. But I wanted to finish my, yeah. my point about uh, uh, the essential nature of like these clothing. I, th I think one, one of the things that some of these people get confused on, or, or they're just disingenuous, that's obviously also a, an aspect of this. Yes, Simone, everyone hears you. They love you. Please stop meowing at me. Thank you. Uh, part of it is like they don't understand the difference between a sex act and like a representation. So part of like, obviously people who enjoy kink sexually will wear attire that, that suits their needs uh, for their, their kink activity. However, if you're wearing it at Pride, it's not because you are engaged in like kink or having sex or engaging in a sexual activity while you're like at Pride, but that you're wearing the clothes that are a representation of what uh, of of the sexual activity that you enjoy and the reason why you're wearing that representation is and the reason why kink should be allowed at, at pride is because kink often has been associated both with like queerness and with uh the gay community general generally and and it's also something that a lot of people have looked down upon and have harm that community by thinking that they're weird or or shouldn't be here or they're they're icky in some capacity and so this is a way of saying what i do in my bedroom is completely normal and you, it should be accepted just like what anyone else wants to do with consenting adults right that's the whole point of this so they're wearing a representation of that to be i engage in this and it's okay to engage in it but while they're wearing those clothes in the pride it's not like they're fucking people while at pride you know what i mean I mean, they might if there's particular areas where everyone's consented to the fucking activity, but no one's walking down Main Street and having sex, okay? That, <laughs> that is not happening. Maybe it should. That was a party. That was wrong. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I just, I, I find that so easy to, like, reflect on. It's like, and here's the thing is, one of the other things I want to hit here is that I feel like RGR and people like them, uh, you know, uh, I almost feel like they've never been around children. <clears throat> and as a parent... It's probably for the best. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the people. it's probably a good talk. Both of my uh, kids have walked in pride. Uh, I, I had no worry about it. They've seen people in all kinds of dress at Pride, and it's never bugged me. I will even say here, if it happened that someone was nude at Pride, and I took my child to the Pride, and they happened to have seen a penis in public, I would talk to them about that, and I actually would have no problem with the exposed penis being there at Pride, and my child has to be near it. Or like we walked past it, like I like I don't know like why people get so hyper fixated on like some something bad is going to happen in that situation, uh, or or what that would represent uh, for the kid like somehow the kid's going to be traumatized or something, when it's like, be a parent, talk to your kid about what's going on, explain things to them, and I'm sure they'll turn out okay. They won't be traumatized. They'll they'll realize what's the purpose of what is going on here. And they'll move on with their lives, go home and play Minecraft, and everything will be hunky dory and fine. Like I just I don't understand why people get so freaked out as if like the mere sight of nudity or something is going to like destroy their brains, or or nudity aside, like somehow they're going to see a leather daddy and then their like life is ruined for all of time. <laughs> I just don't. Why is that an issue? As a parent, I don't care. So why do you care as someone who, who is not a parent? I, I don't get it. Now, I will frame there. You can, you can come up with like ethical considerations of kids even though you're not a parent. I'm not trying to say that you can't have opinions and discuss them. I'm just saying there might be something to being a parent that gives you some experience with raising kids. Obviously, parents can be wrong and all that fun stuff. I'm not making any claims to have like special knowledge because I'm a parent. I just have a lived experience. Now, kink and pride discourse happened. 
That was back in June. And it, it, I, I, so as it was happening, as you could tell, I haven't brought up Doe yet, but as it was happening, Doe chimed in to this stream, which was about the kink at pride stuff and started, uh, taking captions of, of the stream. And so we're going to watch some of the, the, the captions here. They're very short of little snippets that Doe captured of RGR and some of its comments on, on what it saw. Puritism is a scourge on the earth. I mean, how much sexual imagery uh, that is overly heterosexual brainwashes children in the West every day. 100%. Well, at the last Pride, the Samba dancer in the NDP contingent simulated penetrating me from behind. Thought I am straight, cisgendered. I was not offended or cared. These people will likely accuse me of being a child sex predator for not being offended. Which is weird. I refuse to react in a way that casts a negative light on a harmless act. Fair enough. Well said. Well said. Yeah, exactly. So here's RGR in a, in a debate panel thing. Cool. Uh, so I thought it over. I have three main purposes of pride. Of you can't see to RGR. The LGBT community, to strengthen the community, and to celebrate the community. My position on kink, and especially as it relates to children, is that letting kink... Can you move it I'm over focused. the pixelated fairy person? You want me here? As if I'm a part of the panel? Or should I be middle? over Jangles? I don't know who that person is. I don't know who any of them are. <laughs> I just meant like the pixie, pixie. Sorry. I the only um, maybe maybe I shouldn't uh, bring this up, but I, I'm gonna do it anyways because uh, screw them. But like, we, I was in a group chat with Jangles who left because I criticized RGR back when this. No, it was actually after this had happened uh, sometime. So I'm gonna cover up our uh, Jangles because of what okay. they've done to me. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I don't care, Jangles. Oh, if, if, if by chance you watch this, I don't actually care. I'm just making a light ribbing, light ribbing. Who is? I mean, Haas is is yeah. We could cover Haas too. I could be like the center of the the Hollywood squares here. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do it. I, yeah, I don't know who any of these people are. I, I've never seen any of these people in my life. Good. I I know the person I just Good. covered up. I know I know them. I know them. And I kind of know her. I have never really watched a lot of her content. I think her name's Stardust. I've seen her on Twitter and stuff. Haas also I've seen her on Twitter and stuff. And uh, has generally also been someone who I've found annoying. O only because they're like, again, debate bro people. And again, Jangles is a, is a debate bro as well. And he's had takes that I've agreed with, like uh, pro science, all that fun stuff. Like Cool, cool to Jangles. But... Another thing happened with RGR. I should fill in because, like, maybe, maybe we'll we'll go off the. There's other things that happened between this and uh, what happened recently that made me really dislike RGR. One of which is that RGR had a f uh, got mad at someone named Demon Mama about gender essentialism, and RGR is uh, kind of a gender essentialist that thinks that. There's some like there must be something that if you're trans, you can point to to say that here is why I am really trans. Rather, that is like your brain being a particular way or or something. There's there's gonna be an essential component. And Demon Mama was like, no, like we don't need to like find a part of your brain in order to determine like you are officially trans. You get to count. All that matters is that someone says, I feel this way, and I identify this way, and just respect it. And I agree with Demon Mom in that discussion. I don't think you, you... I don't think you can find something that's, like, essential, biological, or whatever, that you can, like, point to. And even, even if, like, there was something that some people who are trans or, or non-binary or whatever have something in their brain that could point to that, but there's other people who identify but don't have that thing in their brain, why wouldn't you just refer to them how they want to be referred to out of respect? Why not? Like, why does it, like, just at the bottom of it, it seems like such a silly distinction to make. But again, I, I want to refer to it as debate-itis. Debate-itis has taken over these people's brains, okay? So she made this, this thing, and that was another falling out, 
the thing that fu- like I already was like I don't like this RGR prism because kink of pride discourse gender essentialism then she started going on some tirade about how like all these people posting the eat the rich stuff or like guillotines all of them they're all a bunch of like they're just as bad as the alt-right who like says they want to do evil things to Jewish people and stuff like this uh so when you post guillotine memes or you say eat the rich you're just as bad and jangles came to to her defense about this which is part of why i i called him out for it and he left the group chat that we were in and i it's just like they're not the same those are not the same fucking thing you know you know like fuck the rich like why do we care about the rich and why should we give them deference and not like this story that we just talked about about that fucking gas like pipeline like, wh- what do you think is happening such that this gas pipeline is being built? So we're not allowed to fight back at all? We just, like, let them let them beat the shit out of us and lay down their gas pipe, you know? It's just such a stupid discussion. And so it's like the few people who are being brutalized by the state start spamming some guillotine memes, and all of a sudden we're just as bad as, like, fucking fascists? It's such a stupid, stupid point to make. So this this is... There's so much context to, to all these people. But this this is why, like, she's annoyed me for so long, and this this one takes the cake. But I will replay this clip so we get the context. So this is RGR talking about uh, the... why she does not think kink should be at Pride, okay? Cool. Uh, so I thought it over. I have three main purposes of Pride. To unite the LGBT community, to strengthen the community, and to celebrate the community. My position on kink, and especially as it relates to children, is that letting kink, and I'm focusing very specifically on kink because I feel like a lot of people get away from this, and the pride completely unregulated means that we cannot achieve the first goal of uniting the community. So let's let's refresh so we get what the first goal was. Cool. Uh, So I thought it over. I have three main purposes of pride, to unite the LGBT community, to strengthen... So you the only way to unite the LGBT community is to get rid of kink at pride (laughs) so in order to unify we must disunify (laughs) fucking brilliant we must have a purge (laughs) of the unclean (laughs) and so not only did I just recognize this? But back in June, uh, Doe also recognizes. I started watching this vaguely recent panel on kink at Pride and cannot stop laughing at RGR's first words, which is essentially, if we don't exclude you, we can't unite. I feel bad for anyone who will have her as a lawyer in the future. Uh, RGR is is in school to be a lawyer or is currently a lawyer? I, I don't know the full full context. Law school, I thought. It's It's such a... How are, no one can be blamed for not knowing. Just don't. Yeah. Follow it. yeah. She continues this level of unintelligible nonsense by saying kink is defined in relation to sexuality. Therefore, you're involving children in a sexual act. This is intentional. Or, this is intentional or not the stupidest sleight of hand I've ever seen. So we'll now hear her make this claim. Kink is defined by every reputable source as acting in a way specifically appealing to an unconventional sexual taste, desire, or preference. I have not found anyone who has said that kink is not sexual to provide a definition that somehow is more reputable and not referencing sexual desires or preferences. So doing this around children necessarily involves them in a sexual act. Kink is... I don't know if that's... I don't, I don't know where they got that definition. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear where they got that specific definition of kink. Defined by every reputable source. Is- all other normal kinks. I'd love to hear it. I mean, I already talked about the difference between the representation of it. Like, in a, in a way, it's like wearing a costume of it. Like, I don't think if you dress up as a ghost on Halloween that you're literally a ghost, right? So if you're engaged in a celebration of the kink and you wear like a representation of that kink are you doing the kink <laughs> you know what i mean like there's it seems to me like the, right. those those two things can be held separately but the other part of this is like that would kink is not the only sexualized piece of clothing aren't skirts in some ways sexualized 
Like, like we can argue about whether they should or should not be sexualized, but it's clear that like mass media and like its portrayals in films and, and uh, music videos, etc. Some of the clothes that people wear on an everyday basis have been completely sexualized and are discussed in very sexual ways. Suits, even if you want to talk about like a masculine, a more masculine description of like sexuality or or uh, jeans in the Fifty Shades of Grey series. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, you've read those? Excuse me. <laughs> no, I haven't. I just heard a reference and then oh, found the reference. reference to um the fact that the main dude has a pair of what he refers to as dom jeans that he changes into to have sex in that is the most ridiculous fucking thing i've ever heard tim's yep <laughs> tim says it's act- jeans are sex now well i mean jeans are fucking sexy let's be real tim marsh yeah. says <laughs> okay I'll, I'll say your point then we'll get to tim marsh Sorry. Um, <laughs> somebody today, I was on the bus home because I was leaving work because I'm like vaguely ill. And I was at the bus stop and some dude passed and I was like, whoa, nice tuxedo to me because I was wearing a jean jacket and jeans. <laughs> Amazing. That's it actually pretty awesome. killed me. Yeah. That's, a, that's incredible. Oh. All right, so Tim says, it's actually the same logic that conservatives always use when they say educating children about anything LGBTQIA plus is sexualizing children. But don't blink an eye at the exposure of children to heterosexual couples kissing and the like in Disney movies. Yeah. 100%. (laughs) Do you involve children in a sexual act when wearing a shirt with cleavage? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know. Yes, you do. (laughs) And you need to be chastise and put in prison you dirty I mean, fucking sinner doe doe raised a whole bunch of issues that prodded rgr on that point and rgr seemed to uh either either avoid it or double down on it because doe was talking about how they've worn clothes before non kink related clothes uh or sorry, it wore clothes before, that uh, it wanted to feel attractive, and so wore that kind of clothes. You know? (laughs) And that's perfectly fine to do, right? Or at least everyone would think that some people wear clothes because they think, hey, I want want someone to, to look at me and say that I'm sexy, right? And so they wear a particular style of clothes to elicit that response. And then in comes RGR going, but if a child sees it? <laughs> it's like, why? Why? I fucking hate these people. But it was so... <laughs> I just, it's like, it's not even, it's not personal. It's just like that, especially during that delivery of that definition, it's so just duplicitous. It's like, I, like... Every definition I've seen. Like, what definitions? What are you reading? Is it the Bible? Did the Bible tell you that? Like, it's like, unless you can provide me a different definition. Like, no, I don't, I don't need to give you a definition to tell you this is fucking stupid. This is so much effort. Oh, my God. This shouldn't necessarily matter, but I think... I mean, other people have pointed it out to me, and I know... I, I'm pretty sure this is the case that RGR is Christian, and that might account for for some of this. Uh, Also fits in with Tim's comment about conservatives, where it's possible that this is the upbringing that RGR had. Or at least that it played some role in it. However, discourse continues. So this, again, this is all the way back in June. So Doe, after posting those clips, then said this, and this is the thing that has uh, caused a drama that lasted until today. Doe, responding to what we just watched, said, Some people like feet. If you go shoeless to a public event because your partner likes feet, you're not involving children in a sexual act. Okay? 
I will say it again, since this is apparently such a disgusting thing for Toto to have said. <laughs> Some people like feet. If you go shoeless to a public event because your partner likes feet, you're, you're not involving children in a sexual act. This, according to RGR, is the equivalent of, of pedophilia or something. I, I'll, I'll give charitability to RGR, but this, this is how RGR sort of uh, uh, describes the, what, what we just heard. Really weird. And a lot of people who come from really fringe parts of the internet are coming out with the really weird takes that apparently kink is fine to do in front of children. We should be able to justify doing it in front of them, even if it's explicitly involving them in a sexual act. Like, what the fuck is going on? This is unironic. Oh my god. They are either I'm negligently here. justifying pedophilia or intentionally justifying pedophilia. And I have so they're either negligently justifying pedophilia with that take. So if uh, RGR here did not uh, mention Doe or the feet thing, but you could see on uh, RGR stream the RGR is looking at Doe's tweets that we just read. Okay. So again, I'll play that last little bit. Negligently justifying pedophilia or intentionally justifying pedophilia? I have no idea what the fuck it is. So you're either negligently justifying pedophilia or you're intentionally justifying pedophilia. To me, that sounds like Riley's calling Doe a pedophile. Right? Either, either a pedophile who's just like ignorant about their own pedophilia or uh, intentionally, uh, explicitly being pedophilia, pedophilic. Right? This, this is what I get from this comment. Riley tried to walk that back, but I, I just want to say, like, listen to it again and listen to how, like, really weird. heightened... Either negligently justifying pedophilia or intentionally justifying pedophilia. Like, if someone said that about me, I'd be like, you're calling me a pedophile, and I take umbrage towards uh, your, your suggestion here. So are you going to say something, Vienna? Oh, no, I was just loudly sighing. So RGR tried to walk this back, but, like, they blocked each other, uh... All the, and like Doe started receiving harassment from RGR fans calling uh, Doe a pedophile. This has been going on for months. Uh, ongoing harassment. It has not been fun for Doe, obviously. All because of that tweet that we read. Okay. Now, what happened recently was RGR went on a live stream with another streamer named Demon Mama, who. Uh, or they didn't technically go on stream together. It was actually a very beautiful moment, which I have to give credit to Demon Mama. Uh, <laughs> after the whole uh, gender essentialism discussion, which I mentioned, which I think preceded the Kink at Pride discussion, uh, Riley came out uh, being for gender essentialism. Demon Mama was kind of like, I, I go with just whoever identifies as what. RGR then led, led a hate campaign against Demon Mama, who's trans, calling Demon Mama transphobic because Demon Mama thinks simply identifying as trans is sufficient for trans identity uh, and that you should just respect people and their pronouns and what they tell you they're, they're feeling. And for Riley, that was not good enough, and that makes Demon Mama a transphobe for some reason. Uh, that, that makes perfect <laughs> sense, actually. If you... It, no, seriously, just listen. If you... Don't think about it at all and don't use critical thought. Riley's point. Riley makes a good point. So, so Demon Mama recently did a stream going through all uh, RGR's interactions with her and the harassment that she has received from RGR's community and RGR herself, which she has every right of doing. And in the middle of that stream, Riley came on and was like begging her to like let Riley into the chat so they can have a debate and discuss this. And Demon Mama just flat out said no. And so then Riley started flipping out in the chat and like yelling, let me in, let me in, in all caps in the chat. <laughs> Which is totally normal, totally, you know, rational behavior. And then finally Demon Mama was like, okay, join the chat. And R Riley, Riley hops in and Demon Mama made sure that Riley was on video, but then had her muted and was, I, and then goes, to, while Riley's face is on the screen, goes, you can come in and debate me, but first I want to have confirmed and see that you've donated to me $300. <laughs>
Nice. <laughs> Which I think was amazing. <laughs> Just fucking amazing. And uh, of course, Riley did not donate $300, and uh, it never happened. But uh, that occurred. And after that occurred, Doe commented and was commenting on the fact of uh, the, accusations, uh, the accusations of pedophilia based on this. And then RGR came out of nowhere, even though they used to be blocked or something. I don't, I don't know all the drama. And RGR was like, Doe, debate me. And so Doe was like, let's do it. <laughs> okay. And so this is, this is when we, we arrive at like the piece of drama. They go on to talk about this. And it's an hour-long debate. I actually recommend watching it just because of how the twists and turns in this are wild. I do have to warn you, there is a, a point of it where they talk about uh, CSA, child sexual assault. It's, it's specifically Doe's child sexual assault. But in the context, it's... What Doe did, like, similar to Demon Mama asking for the $300, which, again, it's like it's less debate and more just, like, a show of how fucking stupid this whole community is. And I say that knowing that some of these figures that I'm talking about here are debate figures. But, like, that move is kind of like an anti-debate move. It's like, it's, it's an awareness that what is going on here is merely a monitor. It's a, it's a monetization uh, thing. It's merely for clicks and drama rather than like an actual consideration about whether or not this is a good thing to be doing. And so at that level, I respect that, even though I would recommend most of these people should just stop. <laughs> okay? Even the people I like out of this, most of them should just stop all this debate shit. Okay? But Doe and Riley are debating, and the debate is. I don't know if the intention was to debate the uh, foot, foot incident or uh, to debate uh, the uh, neo pronouns, which like the it, it's that Doe uses, but like it, it, might, it must have been like a combination of this, these issues. But it mainly just f focused around the, uh, the accusation of pedophilia surrounding this, this tweet. Okay. And throughout most of the discussion, Doe almost says absolutely nothing. It's mostly RGR uh, leading the conversation and leading it in a way to, to try. It almost felt like RGR was trying to catch Doe in a gotcha, which she could then clip Doe and then like give it to her fans to be like, look, Doe is a pedophile. I proved it. That's what it felt like RGR was trying to do going into it. And so there's like all this poking and prodding and it's getting to like the roots of it. And, and, and using all these kinds of hypotheticals, which like I had mentioned hypotheticals earlier, but this is like the one thing that's really annoying is being like coming up with weird, hyper specific scenarios that will never happen in order to prove some sort of fucking weird logical gotcha is so annoying. So annoying. Which is why eventually Doe describes its experience of being a victim of child sexual assault. And in the context of the debate, it comes out of the fact of like, look, we don't have to speculate about, like, you're trying to say that these things are sexual acts. Meanwhile, like, this bad thing happened over here that was a sexual act. And part of it involved someone uh, who didn't actually assault them, but was considering purchasing them for the purpose of assault, right? Trafficking them are it. And Riley somehow, I don't know why they did this, doubled down and bit the bullet and said that the person who was purchasing was not actually engaging in a sexual activity, but was simply thinking about buying something. And that's when Doe ends the discussion. <laughs> drops right out of the call and was just like I, I can't believe that happened which is why I think part, part of me is why I think this discourse kind of is going to end itself because like when you say something like that I just, I just want to like frame it there too it's like if someone's wanting to purchase sex that is kind of a sexual activity 
especially if you're going to claim that like having a foot exposed near children is a sexual activity if you're a foot fetishist right i don't know i just want to say critical support for i i will say critical support for vosh we are going to watch that clip this is like the white guys who are like, right, but what if a civil rights leader was being attacked by a killer robot and its deactivation code word is the N-word? Would I be able to say it then? <laughs> yeah, exactly. In some sort of like, oh, that's a weird place to freeze it. It's like, let's come up with such weird, hyper-specific scenarios that'll never happen. But the thing is, when, when Doe drops the, its experience about what happened to it, you could tell Riley's mood changes drastically. Eventually, she starts to claim that what Doe did was poisoning the well. It's, you know, as someone who has taught philosophy and logic, that is not what poisoning the well is. But the, the implication there is, you've ruined our perfect logical discussion with a real-world scenario, Doe. Why would you? You've, you've ruined the sanctity of logic debate happenings <laughs> by bringing in real stuff. And so a lot of people initially came to RGR's, especially in RGR's community, to her defense, saying that, like, RGR was railroaded by, by Doe. But if you're having a debate on this issue, and someone has, like, direct personal experience of this, uh, let alone the fact of, like, I have been the victim of a pedophile, and you're here now calling me a pedophile, yes, I am going to have emotions, emotions and feelings. And then, but like somehow in the debate world, having any emotions or feelings, you've now, you've now like ruined something. You've crossed a, a threshold you're not supposed to cross. You've brought it into the realm of the real and we should have stayed in the land of hypotheticals. Or it's like, I don't know. Sometimes real world experience is very important and very relevant to these conversations. Especially when your interlocutor is going to double down and say the person who was purchasing sex from you was actually not engaged in a sexual activity. Fucking, fucking fantastic. Way to go, Riley. But it did not end there. <laughs> uh, no way did someone actually count. Wait, RGR interrupted Doe 117 times during the debate. Yeah, no, it was, it was wild. And Doe had so much patience. Again, it, I... I don't know Doe that much. I've, I've enjoyed uh, most of its content that I've watched. I'm not a huge fan of, of Vosh for various reasons that uh, we don't need to get into. But RGR, after interacting with Doe, went on to Vosh, Vosh's stream, who just watched the debate, to have some sort of conversation. And I have to say, Vosh also handled this really well. You see, Jody, you're not uh, supposed to bring in the real world instances in hypotheticals. True. Yeah, that was the first time I've seen anything from Doe, but I was so impressed. Oh, big, shiny takes. Hello, Eric. If Eric, if you're here, Hello. we did we did mention your uh, fun fun. Thing you created today earlier in the in the uh the stream so thank you for doing that that was very kind and everyone should go follow big shiny takes they are a very they are a very wonderful group of people that we love very much it's a radio station on youtube it is we described the whole thing i had it up on the stream and everything i already exited out of it so i i think so it's not here anymore but i did do it it did happen people can vouch for me and Eric did not put me up to it either. I did it anyways, because I loved the idea so much. <laughs> we are talking, if, for those who, who joined us, we are talking about the recent drama uh, involving someone named Riley uh, Grace Roshong and another person named Doe uh, about uh, pedophilia? <laughs> <laughs> the cursed foot discourse yes whether or not someone with a foot fetish not wearing socks in public and a child sees it is pedophilia or not something like that uh you asked me to do this elrod and i i don't even i have an empty can here i guess 
I'm out of I'm out of my my soda. My my drink is done. But uh, debate culture. Hmm. Eric, if you have the link to the radio station up again and want to post that, because I cannot find it by searching on YouTube, but also I refuse to log into YouTube. So, um, but if you want to have a debate on YouTube and engage in the culture of debate, be sure to bring yourself a nice, refreshing diet Pepsi. <laughs> The debate of debate, <laughs> the taste of debate culture everywhere. Nothing says I disagree like the biting taste of a Diet Pepsi. If you really want to be taking a stand and a position on something, it's got to be a pro Pepsi standpoint first <laughs> and foremost. That is what, what must ground you going into every debate is the wonderful and refreshing taste of Diet Pepsi. You, the only true debate culture is the uh, Coke v. Pepsi debate. Really, that is, that is the one true debate. There is no other debate. That is, that is the er debate. That is the essential debate. Nothing, nothing can compare. What does Mal think about barefoot in public? Okay, well, let's find out. Here is... Uh... <laughs> Here's the chairman on what, uh, what the importance of being barefoot in public. Okay, here we go. Yes, Simone. Can I read? Okay. One of his lesser known essays. Yeah. In the final analysis, national struggle is a matter of class struggle. Among the whites in the United States. Oh, we're getting some call outs here. <laughs> It is only the reactionary ruling circles who opposes, who oppress the black people. They can in no way represent the workers, farmers, revolutionary intellectuals, and other enlightened persons who comprise the overwhelming majority of the white people. I like the, I kind of like this chairman Mao guy. Nice. Wait, it's, it's some good things. No, did, wasn't he just saying like, oh no, it's just the rich white people? I'm. Yeah, that last sentence is confusing. I can't tell if he's yeah. saying most white people are the bourgeois, or if it's. I think no, that's that's what he's saying. We we can stop there. That's no, he's saying the right thing. That's right. um, yeah, and like the statement, the actual like title of the essay. I pulled up my copy here. Of says, course, of course you did. <laughs> well, the well, title is my new computer's right next to my bookshelf. I, I so. forgot to finish the quote by reading the title, which is "Statement Supporting the American Negroes in Their Just Struggle Against Racial Discrimination by U.S. Imperialism, August 8th, 1963." Thank you, thank you, Chairman Mao. We really appreciated your support. Thank Mao, you. Mao was coming in. <laughs> There's a reason <laughs> that the Black Panthers sold this book, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and from there, the Wu Tang Clan was. Born. Oddly enough, I think that was one of the most relevant, uh, relevant quotes <laughs> so far out of this book. It's the one that like involved something a little bit more than just being like, communism is. Can you repeat that again? What do you want me to repeat? Is quote, it... I think. No, I've already read it. It's done. It's in the passing. Barefoot landlords were the only survivors. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. We're gonna we're gonna finish up with this drama here, the fun uh, the fun drama. In that, uh, basically, where I was at was all that had transpired. Uh, maybe, maybe I said I wasn't gonna show this clip, but maybe maybe I should just just for the context. The end when when Doe finally hung up in frustration with the debate when Riley dropped. Her super bizarre take. And I will I will give the content warning, which again, this has to do with child sexual assault. I mean, it, there's not like, we're not going to have extreme detail here. Uh, I think holes will be referenced. Grimpy. Can't find the video <laughs> immediately, though. Unless it's been removed. Oh, excuse me. Um... Grumpy said landlords wear leather dog masks to blend into the crowd. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, 
I, it's weird. I thought it was on Joe's Twitter feed, but I do not see it. So I wonder if that means it was removed. And if it was removed, I don't want to share it because that would mean that Doe might not want it to be shared anymore, which is fair. Yeah. Um, Tim said that the real discourse we should be having is no landlords at Pride. You can't normalize rent seeking in front of children. They'll grow up thinking that's OK. That is literally true. That's like, yes. <laughs> Ban the banks, ban the corporations, oh, no, ban the landlords. Like, yeah. We're doing that. Was this it? This might not be. Let me just make sure that it's it. Everybody come down to London uh, July 2022. Yeah, because we're a month behind, as always. So again... What the clip I'm just about to play for you, for those who have not seen it, is the end of the debate. And Doe described its sexual assault. Um, is this Doe? This is Doe. Okay, I feel like I've seen this person before. We, we've, we've rated it before. Yes. That has happened. My camera went I out. I think it has also been like reading theory or talking about Still more theory shit. Most of it's like last time that I saw it. Most of its posts have all been. It, it's been posting Whoa. a lot about like Deleuze and and stuff like that recently. Okay. In case sure. that's your thing, a, a lot of postmodern stuff. Deleuzeans tend to be annoying. Is like my only real take on them. I I don't know that it's supportive. It's more of that's just the material it engages, engages with. with. Yeah. No, and I mean, by Deleuzeans, I don't even mean, like, necessarily. <laughs> like, I mean people who engage with Deleuze. Like, Fair. I don't know. It's more just, like, this could be within very specific circles. Doe is a theory head. That's fucking cool. I love that. I wish we did more of that. Well, here it goes. Right? So this is, this is the end of the discussion would distinguish and say that the reason why that does not apply is because that person we can reasonably surmise was not primarily engaging in a sexual act at that time they were looking at me to buy me and all right and you are and i know that you are trying to just be as overly inflammatory as possible this is not inflammatory. and i would say i would say that in that situation the thing they are primarily focusing on was the buying that's what my answer would be and i know that you're just going to respond with oh my god riley you're so terrible I left. <laughs> oh what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like I <laughs> the guy, the guy who wanted to buy my holes. The main thing he was thinking about was the buying. <laughs> Like, I don't even know oh. what the fuck that means. When, when, like, and the only thing that I can think of is that RGR was trying to, like, bite some bullet here in order to, like, prove that Doe was a pedophile still. Like, that, that's the only, like, but, like, but in doing so, you just admitted that, like, somebody purchasing a child for sex. That's a big bullet to bite. <laughs> it's not yeah. doing anything sexual. Like, yeah. So, so fucking weird. So then, oh. RGR, RGR goes on Vosh. And this is the last thing that we'll play. This is the end of... So then, RGR goes on with Vosh for a solid hour again. And this is the end of that discussion. And I, I say what you will about Vosh. I know Vosh is complicated, all that fun stuff. But I, I think what Vosh says here is great. This is a great, like, what, how he sums this up, I perfectly agree with. I, don't, I think he analyzed the situation perfectly. Uh, and then we'll, we'll final up, we'll, we'll end with, like, the, the sort of extension of what came out of this drama, such that I wanted to talk about it. So, uh, after talking with her for an hour to try to be like, are you really saying that wearing, like, bare feet is some, and a child sees it and your foot fetishes that somehow you're involving them in the, your sexual activity. Do you really think that? 
And this is at the end of, of that, basically. I think you, what you're essentially saying is that if you have a makeout sesh with a person and you're in public and a kid sees you and you defend that Do you think that, that there's later? a difference between a makeout session and appealing to someone's foot fetish? Yeah, actually, a makeout session is way the fuck more involved. There's physical contact and people can see what's going on. With a foot fetish, literally nobody knows. Because you're just barefoot. They just see a barefoot person. Nobody knows, though. So yeah, so I would actually say that, so first of all, neither of them enable pedophilia. But second of all, that the makeout sesh is actually, whatever characteristics you're approximating, the makeout sesh is much more so. So the, no, but, the, it doesn't, but it doesn't matter. The whole point is that it doesn't matter if the kids don't know. The point is that you but justify. But what, what they see or, matters, isn't no, it? That's why we care about PDA. Being able to do sex acts in front of kids. That is the point. It doesn't matter if they don't know. I would say that their consent is violated. Yeah, I would, I would, I, I think I've more or less exhausted my patience here. I would say <laughs> that you're making right here is an argument that hurts children. I think this is a moralist, wait. like, wait, hold on. What? I think this is an hold insane, on, wait, to, oh, Riley, I will, I'll thing. mute you. I think this is an insanely moralist argument that serves no purpose other than to dilute the meaning of actual child sex abuse, and you're using it specifically because you have some kind of weird fucking beef with the subject. I think it's borderline reprehensible that you would I ever try to hop onto something as innocuous as making out with people in public agree that and use it to justify how is that like making out like making out, you think making out in public is tantamount to non-consensually involving children in acts you i hope to that god you've never made out with somebody in public riley because if that's what you were thinking of i'm disgusted jesus fuck i don't know <laughs> i would have had to because there's no condition under which riley would have ever ended that conversation like riley probably could have kept going for another six hours that's fucking revolting this is literally god your shit <laughs> That's fucking revolting. This is literally QAnon shit. And I, I have to agree that it's QAnon shit. Uh, like, it, it's so, like... There's, like, a level in which you just get so obsessed with, with this one thing that, like, is so niche, not real, and, like, by doing so, you take the air out of, like, real instances of of child sexual trauma you know and, and like that's like the one thing like uh, he mentions QAnon here and the, and the thing to relate to QAnon is the fact that like many orgs have spoken out against QAnon to say that your your activism here to protect the children is actually harming our organizations that are trying to actually protect real children in real danger we shouldn't be like trying to address you constantly for going after mysterious incidences by like the demo corporate Democrats all uh, selling hot dogs and pizzas. Like our energy should be focused on the real people being abused uh, and not your made up people that are being abused. And it's similar here. It's like Riley is focusing on this weird thing and diluting the conversation when I don't know. Maybe we should focus on real, real acts of abuse and not people who wear clothing at a pride event and not a random person on Twitter who says they're not upset with somebody who has a foot fetish wearing bare feet around children. Even then, I, I, I don't even think Doe's tweet mentioned that it was a foot fetish. Some people like feet. You go shoeless to a public event because your partner likes feet. You're not involving children in a sexual act. So I guess the partner has a foot fetish, maybe. So. Turns out symbolic grandstanding mostly serves to dissipate and waste limited attention and resources relative to materially meaningful interventions. Yep. Like, all the hills to die. I know. Like, it, I, like this is why I was so fascinated by this drama. It's like, why die in this hill? Why, why lose? Like, I don't think RGR wins here. I think every community on the internet is... Like, I have not seen any support for RGR. <laughs> The the only and we'll get to the only support I have seen, but most of this has been people going, RGR, that was a fucked up thing to say. Not only not only do we not think Doe is a pedophile, but like you downplayed their their actual assault 
And then you went on to like just like implicate everyone into pedophilia for making out in public. <laughs> like, you're, you've bitten so many bullets that just no one would accept, you know? Twitch is like, well, I, I don't think it's Twitch necessarily. It's debate Twitch for sure. For sure. But I mean, it blends into real life. So th this is like the extension. The only defense that I've seen is I guess some people after this occurred, uh, and this is kind of why I wanted to touch on it. Because I, I find this kind of stuff frustrating as well. But like after this occurred, some people contacted or at least mentioned they were going to contact a charity that Riley apparently sits on the board of. Okay, this is an LGBTQ plus charity that Riley sits on. And I guess people reflected that this ongoing drama was relevant to her position on that board. And maybe the board should be aware of it because what Riley has said here is pretty fucking despicable. Now, the question there is, so like you've had some people come out in support of Riley saying, people are trying to cancel her. People are coming to take her job from her. They're coming to ruin her. It's a hate mob and like people need to tone it down. And there's several like reasons why I think this is like a very absurd and fucked up position to adopt. Specifically because like, those same people, these debate people who are coming to RGR's defense, at least defense in terms of people going after her, like, career, the board on the charity, all this stuff. They didn't come to Demon Mama's defense, and they didn't come to Doe's defense when RGR was calling them, like, pedophile and transphobe. And, like, getting their RGR's community to go and harass Doe and Demon Mama. They didn't defend Demon Mama or Doe, even though, like, that made Demon Mama and Doe's life, like, traumatic. Like, it caused harm to them that they've both verbally expressed. Okay? So why, why is it that they have to defend RGR here in this case in terms of people going after, like, this charity thing? Now, there's a question... Uh, I have about the nature, and I'm curious what people in the chat have to, to say in terms of like whether they think in this case. So again, RGR is either in school or works in a law firm. And so the question is, given this online drama, should people go after her job or contact her job and express disappointment in this? Given that she works, or what about in the context of the LGBTQ board or uh, activist organization that she's a board member of, should they bring that up there? Or is the etiquette that like whatever happens on the internet, whatever happens on Twitter and Twitch stays on Twitch, and we should just not touch it and let Riley exist offline in ways that aren't tainted by the shit that she does online? I'm curious what people think, because I will give you my thoughts. Well, it does kind of belie a lack of critical thinking skills. Well, what if they were espousing white supremacy Nazi shit? It would be a fair game to inform an employer, right? I think that's a reasonable inference too, guys. I... The going after a job thing, I'm a bit more... Comp like, I have a bit more complicated thoughts on. Uh, in that, like, I'm kind of morally neutral on it. But I can understand why people might be upset with it in certain contexts. Rehabilitative justice is a whole other rabbit hole that requires its own focus. I'm 100% I'm on rehabilitative justice. Uh, I think part of the issue is that we don't have structures or systems in place or even communities in place that are good at dealing with it or even restorative justice in some capacity. That it's like we fall back on systems. But then it, you don't want to fall back on too many of these systems that are even worse than like or hey, I'm ha like the, the shit that we've used to, to fill in those gaps, right? But, and, and I'm all for rehabilitation, but as far as I'm aware of, RGR has continued to double down on this. I think uh, RGR even like started vaguely calling Vosh a pedophile after the conversation that we just uh, heard because of the things that, that Vosh just said there, that apparently uh, that makes Vosh a pedophile as well. So not only has she not uh, 
shown any signs or willing to change or that she was wrong, but she's doubled down and is further calling other people pedophiles. So fun times. Uh, it's actually extremely good lawyer behavior to zealously advocate for the position you've been asked to defend, no matter how stupid and flimsy the arguments are. I'm not saying it isn't bad, but lawyers are often bad, so this is the same wheelhouse. <laughs> uh, depends on the authority is my take. It's like go back to draconian and fundamentally broken systems or just shunning until they get better, I guess. I mean, but that, that's part of the thing is like, I don't think... Uh, Nemo, I like, I, I kind of agree, like, with what you're saying. I think, like, the frustration is that, I mean, part part of restoration is getting people to understand they've done a wrong, and some of that might be might come from some kind of shunning or some kind of effect, right? I guess, like, my my worry about going after people's jobs has more to do with economic circumstances. So, I mean, I'm less concerned about that in terms of like Nazis. And uh, I agree that her rhetoric here is not great. And even like, because it leans, it leans a little too much, I think, into the degeneracy narrative of fascists anyways, which is not great. Uh, but then again, she's also like a, a Twitch streamer who makes money on that. Uh, so like part of me is like, you don't need your real world job. So I'm less... You know, I, I'm more concerned about people who engage in sort of like casual acts of like bigotry and then like having their lives ruined by not having a job. But I don't th think that that's something that actually happens all that much. Uh, so I'll say like that is my only like relative concern where I'm like going after someone's job might do more harm than good in some capacity. That being said... If the guy's a bigot, do you want a bigot being around their co-workers being a bigot? Like, I don't know. It's complicated, you know? However, the LGBT group should care about this, though, shouldn't they? Especially since uh, this didn't come up, I, I think, in any of the things that I said. But RGR has an issue with Doe's it, it's pronoun usage. RGR does not like it and think that that's wrong. RGR is also a gender essentialist or a trans essential, like believes in some sort of essential identity which will exclude some people from the trans community. Generally, the term for that is trans medicalist. Trans medicalist, yeah. yeah. I mean, the only reason I don't use that language with RGR is because it's not clear to what extent, because at least, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Fiano, because I possibly could be wrong about it. But I gather that trans medicalism specifically had to do with like people who believed you had to go through like certain steps of surgery, surgery or taking uh, medication in order to officially be trans. And I don't think RGR went like went slightly beyond that, saying that like you don't have to have any medication or surgery to be trans, but there has to still be something like like br your brain has to be a certain way or something like that. So I don't see, but I think that that's still like, like it might it's be a still soft true trans scummy? medicalism. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah, true scum also works, I suppose. Um, also, can we just? Sorry, I really want to talk about something that is unrelated to this. That is huge. That happened in Quebec yesterday. That like I haven't seen published in English at all yet. Oh, well, I'm uh, I'm I free to go server. to go uh, long, so I, I don't mind. But like, uh... yeah. We can finish up this uh, discussion first, though. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to frame that because yeah. <laughs> like, I am probably going to be quiet because I'm literally just like in awe of this. Fair enough. I guess it depends. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, when the uh, I guess it depends if there are any foot fetishes at our place. God damn you. Yeah, when the essential criteria are assumed to be biological characteristics, that typically falls under the conceptual rubric of transmedicalism even though it isn't necessarily the main element of earning trans status through diagnosis and procedures. There's also the interpretation of trans medicalists that means in any way wanting to pathologize transness. Yeah. We are all just kind of circle tricking. That is correct, Yuta. If anything, our channel is a consensual circle jerk. <laughs> we, I, I generally, you know, we're pretty good at get, getting rid of the shitty people out of the chat, you know? It is anti- we are anti-debate. We are only here for solidarity 
and building up a movement. That's that's all. We're here to bring people together, all the good people together, because all the bad people could stay the fuck out. Good people, good. Bad people, bad. That's <laughs> apparently my my camera technology did not like me saying that, and uh, decided to quit. Let's try this again. Up, up, up. But yes, the LGBTQ board. The thing, and and this implicates another streamer. Uh, too, and I'll mention their name in a second. But I honestly don't think there's anything wrong to contact this board. I think s someone who holds these views that sits on an LGBTQ plus board that that's concerning. That's very concerning, and especially someone. Not only do uh, they hold these views, which I think stand contrary to the LGBTQ movement at least uh, a good one, <laughs> however morally you want to frame that. But also the, the fact that you're willing to willy-nilly call people pedophiles over such trivial bullshit online. That like that, yeah, maybe you shouldn't be involved in a board for these issues. And maybe a board needs, needs to be made, ha have this brought to their attention. I, th I think like what underlies a lot of this too, though, is like a lot of people have this like idea in their brain that like online and offline are like two separate things and that w what happens online should stay online and shouldn't. And like there's an element in which the, like that makes sense because like Twitter is a thing. You know, it's it's different than chatting with someone one on one in like on the street, you know. But it's like it's not like these things don't have real world impacts. Like when Doe was called a pedophile, when they're not a pedophile, that probably had an effect on it. Such that like when it shuts down its computer at night, Doe probably didn't feel great about the experience it had online, right? And so, yes, RGR might be different offline than she is online. But if you're behaving this way online, don't you think that that's going to have some effect on the types of shit that she does? In her real life. Are we doing echo chamber discourse? Probably lacking in judgment for a law firm too. I mean, yes. But I, I, I agree with Tim's, which like, it depends on what law firm she works for. They, they might think that that's a benefit than a harm. So it's like, th there's also the extent to which calling the law firm probably won't matter anyway. So why even go through the effort? Where calling, calling or messaging the uh, board that she sits on or the organization that she sits on the board of, I don't know, that might be important. And I think like that could be relevant for your particular type of uh, like activism. Like if you think that neo pronouns are something that should be respected and somebody is on a board of an LGBTQ community that will not support neo pronouns, then maybe that's important to be brought up, you know? Maybe if that goes against your mission, then like that needs to be said, right? So one of the other streamers, Dylan, Dylan Burns, apparently he sits on the same fucking board. And at one point in responding to his chat, who was asking him questions about the RGR thing and whether or not people should contact the charity, Dylan's was, Dylan was like, I would make sure that in my position on that board, I'm going to defend Riley and make sure that she stays on the board. Which I think, again, for the same people who are like, what stays online should stay online, and it's different than offline, and here they are going, I'm going to use my clout for this board to make sure that this person stays on this thing, and I'm going to defend them, even though they're doing all these terrible things. Uh, it's just fucking weird. Very weird. And not only that, like, 
when when somebody in his chat brought up the the neo pronoun stuff his response to it was basically like people in the real world don't really care about neo pronouns especially the older lgbtq type types that might be hanging around uh these organizations they don't care about the neo pronouns so it's not even going to affect them even if you do call in with that complaint as if that's like an excuse for that <laughs> like maybe they should care maybe they should be open to that stuff like i i like i just hate these debate people i hate it so much they all seem to be clout chasing terrible people who with with really terrible terrible opinions that serve no purpose but to get people angry at each other over inane bullshit. And like, here's the thing is, it would be nice if it was really uh, inane in that it like didn't affect other people's lives. But like, this had an effect on Doe. It had an effect on Demon Mama. Demon Mama and Doe seem like normal. I, 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 normal's the wrong word. People who deserve respect. They're not Nazis or pedophiles, you know? I was going to say normal to distinguish everyone from Nazis and pedophiles, but I don't really like the word normal either. What we learned today, blood sport is fucking brutal and disgusting. <laughs> uh, it can be. I mean, in this, there is some elements of this that were beautiful. I think Doe handled themselves uh, with grace and did a wonderful job. I think, I think what Vosh said was particularly uh, good in this moment. I know Vosh has done other really disgusting, terrible shit that uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not endorsing Vosh here. I'm just saying uh, there was some moment of, of purity. <laughs> uh, Dylan is like 20 years old and fucks up a lot. I mean, yes. I want to love him, but he really steps into something. I mean, but that's the thing. I, I think he steps in it a lot. I, I'm not. A, I find. I find Dylan insufferable. I think he called. He called one of Doe's supporters, a member of Hamas, for a pretty benign take. And there's also just the implication of of what that means about the the Palestinian uh, situation. In saying something like that, because Dylan loves to posture as this, I'm I'm this policy wonk. I I worked for the Gravel campaign on policy, foreign policy in particular, and I'm I'm a 20 year old person on Twitch who's just I'm such a foreign policy wonk, and I worked for a campaign that went absolutely nowhere. But this still means that I am a policy wonk. I can get it done. I am I am an expert on foreign policy. That's why I'm going to refer to people as Fuck Hamas. Policy. <laughs> yes. Fuck policy. Normal? Oh, Jody, it's RGR. <laughs> That's, you know, Tim, that is why I caught myself. That is why I caught myself. I did, I did appreciate Demon Mama called Riley uh, a rad norm. <laughs> and I like that uh, insult. Rad norm. A radical normalist. That moment of clarity from Vosh was a cathartic moment, though I will agree. It was. I find Dylan insufferable for the same reason I find most young people on the internet insufferable. They learned a few GRE words, have no fucking actual experience, and way too much to say. Yeah. I mean, a part of this, too, is, is the effect of Twitch. And I guess what I want to say here is uh, people are starting to watch me, you know? We've been averaging around 10 views to view viewers, which is, you know, nice. Sure. I appreciate it. But I also don't want to become. I, there's an issue in, in like having having the camera and the mic and you're voicing things and, and you need to have some degree of confidence to be engaging. And that can have like an effect as if like, I know everything I am. I have I hold all the knowledge. I have figured it all out, which is why I'm the one with the mic. And I'm the one with the camera, and I've got it all figured out. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, Gollum. And, all right, chill out. But it, it is like a Gollum thing. It's like you've, you've got the power, you know? And I want to say, like, I, I hope that I have some amount of humility 
I do not, if, if more people start watching, I do not want to become this, okay? I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong, and I want to have the I'll ability to go, I am wrong. And I want you all to tell me I'm wrong, and I will go, yes. Yes. And especially if I'm speaking on us, I hope, I hope that I never just speak out of my ass. I feel like I do, I, I try my best to clarify when I know less about a subject, that to take what I'm saying with a grain of salt and, and stuff like this. And, and I try my best to, to hedge without being annoying with my hedges. Because you can be overly hedgy and it's just annoying uh, conversationally, right? <laughs> I get that. It's, it's fine, Jody. We're, we're in the chat. We're going to keep you humble, even as you yeah. mansplain things to us. It's going to be good for you. <laughs> if you really get to an overly insufferable point, I'll just dox you and then the <laughs> solve, problem will solve itself. <laughs> Solidarity with you. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his head. That's enough. Goodbye. Uh, Cancel the show. Yeah, what's what's the thing in the chat here? I'll do this since I'm doing it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jody is wrong about so much, it must suffer because of it. There we go. So if I'm ever going uh, going uh, in the wrong direction, just uh, do exclamation bully, and I'll, I'll realize my, my ways. We'll figure it out. That is the far left way of life. Oh my god. So anyways, that's that. And, and uh, in light of that, like, I think people should realize there's consequences of being a shithead online. And if that means that Riley gets kicked off of whatever LGBTQ board she sits on, then so be it. I mean, I haven't invested any of the fucking energy to find out where or do any of that. I, I'm not personally doing that activism. But if someone is sufficiently bored and annoyed and does it, I do not care. I don't think they're lesser. I don't think they need to be shamed for that. I think the person that needs to be shamed is the person right here. This person needs to be shamed. There we go. I forgot oh, I, I was on the wrong like screen. Point it yourself. I mean, I need to be shamed, but for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Hello, my rebels. Hello, my rebels. I'm a good boy. I'm a weirdo.